I think the sustainability challenge is the most critical challenge of the 21st century. There's huge challenges in meeting people's needs, but unfortunately in the past as we've tried to meet people's needs, we've inadvertently had very negative consequences for our planet's life support systems. So our challenge going forward, and the sustainability challenge, is to manage our planet's assets in a way that allows for the well-being of people today and in the future. We are emerging from a time when sustainability, if it was taught at all, was taught sectorally. We talked about environmental sustainability or economic sustainability. Or maybe we talked about sustainability in the energy sector or agricultural sustainability. Those kinds of courses are all great. They're all important. But what we tried to do in the courses that we teach and in this book that we wrote was provide a more general framework for thinking about sustainability, a framework that allows them to understand the important assets that ultimately determine well-being, understand how they interact, understand the trade-offs, basically understand how to manage those assets for long-term intergenerational well-being. As we think about achieving this goal of intergenerational well-being, we realize that we have to find ways to manage a set of assets, and those include natural capital, you know, our ecosystems, our environment, our climate system resources, our manufactured capital, technologies and infrastructures, our social capital, our governance systems, our institutions, our social and cultural connections, our human capital people and their health and their well-being, and knowledge. And we have to manage those assets so that they don't decline over time. Our book is called Pursuing Sustainability because we wrote it expressly for people who want to work on this problem, who are in their own lives, in their own jobs, in their own careers pursuing the idea that we can achieve intergenerational well-being. In our book, we talk about researchers in Mexico and in the U.S. all working together to find ways of carrying out intensive agriculture that produces food and maintains economic well-being, but at the same time dramatically reduces environmental consequences and human health consequences. We also talk about some of the efforts in corporate sustainability, and they're incredibly exciting. Uh, we talk about Ray Anderson and Interface Carpet, the whole story of how he really harnessed the creativity of his employees to shift that corporation to one that has no waste, no emissions, completely reuses and recycles their materials. Wonderful example of what is now known as the circular economy. We need a new type of leader, a leader who understands the connectivity of the planet and understands that any decision has ramifications in other parts of the social and environmental systems. Those leaders also need to have very open mindsets. They need to be adaptive and flexible in this rapidly changing world, but they also need to be reflective and self-aware and empathetic of the communities that they're working with and for. And finally, those leaders need to use their innovation and creativity for change at scale. In other words, uh, apply that wonderful innovation and creativity to making a difference, not just for themselves in one place, but for people around the world and across generations.